welcome to Sew Pretty Kitty. This is my vlog where I talk about all the things I love about sewing. And um, this week I have got a mix video for you. So if that's what you're interested in, please stick around. So firstly, I need to apologise for being missing in action for the last couple of months. The sun started to come out. We've had a big garden renovation going on and I have just been so busy outside that I haven't really had a great deal of time for sewing. And so my, I, what I've done this month is I've combined my March and April makes for you. So I have got two pairs of shorts, uh, two sweatshirts, a cardigan and a pair of earrings to show you. So um, hopefully you'll find that interesting. So if we start off with uh, what I've got on today, I'm wearing a free pattern um, from Tasuti, I think it is. It's called the Mandy Boat Tee and I've made loads of these. So they've got really nice uh, fitted arms, but they're actually really, really boxy. And I tend to wear them with jeans. I don't know if you can see, tucked into my jeans. And um, this is a motif that I got from Design Space. And then I used some gold heat transfer vinyl to put this leopard on the front and I absolutely love it. So yeah, that's what I'm wearing. And then we'll go on to the earrings next, I think, because uh, it seems to be a natural thing to do. So these earrings are made also using my Cricut Maker machine and they are um, faux leather uh, in this sort of like really pale sort of uh, iridescent green colour and I cut them on stera leaves out um, on my maker. I backed them with silver heat transfer vinyl and then I've just put a little jump loop and a hook in. So these earrings I think go really well with the theme of the t-shirt so that is my first make a pair of earrings and I'm really loving um, messing about with my Cricut maker and figuring out how to do different crafts so first sewing make I every year use the same pattern from Pearl Soho to make my girls shorts because they're so cute these shorts and I'm going to pop all the details for the pattern in the drop down box below. I've also done a tutorial on how to sew these shorts. So if you're interested in learning how to sew a really cute pair of children's shorts, not just kids either, it does come in ladies sizes too. I'm going to pop a card up here to that video so you can go and check it out. So these shorts, like I say, I've made tons of these and the reason is they're just so, so cute. They are kind of like an 80s inspired gym short and what you do is you put bias binding all the way around the edge of these shorts and then pop them together so that they overlap on the side and um, it's just a simple elasticated waistband, uh, takes very little time to run up and uses up all the scraps of fabric I've got, all these cute sort of quilting cottons that I tend to be drawn to but never kind of want to wear them myself so um, I don't know about you guys I've got fat quarters that I pick up because I just love the print on the fabric but there's just nothing much that I could make that I would want to wear out of those fabrics so having kids it's perfect for making up these little cute ones and this year uh, my middle daughter wanted elephants so uh, that was the first thing I made and then the second pair were actually supposed to be for me but unfortunately, I don't know what happened. I've used this pattern so many times. I think I must just not been concentrating it and I cut the wrong size. But luckily my eldest is 13. And um, so I just gave them to her instead. I couldn't get these bad boys over my hips, unfortunately. But um, they're just made with some chambray that I had in my stash. And it's really lovely and soft chambray. I put white bias binding on these ones just to pick out the dots on the fabric and again a little elasticated waist and a label in those so yeah, the girls are happy with their new summer shorts and it's an absolutely fab free pattern so um, go ahead and make it because you won't regret it if you've got kids or if you want to pair for yourself. So the next thing I made was something that I have been coveting uh, for a long time and I wasn't sure whether or not I was actually going to like the style on me and so many people have made these massive statement sleeves haven't they this big puffy shoulder business um you know uh gathered in cuffs that's been a massive trend and 
it's not sort of something that I would naturally, I'm not a very frilly girl, I'm much more into sort of um, denim and, uh, you know, sort of less girly stuff. I don't make a lot of dresses. And so it was a bit of a, bit of a risk, um, but I thought I'm just gonna have a go. So this is the pattern I use, the I Am Zebra uh, by I Am Patterns. And you can see from the line drawing, it's got a statement sleeve. Um, and a popper placket on the shoulder. So I wasn't sure that I would really like puffs up here. So I thought I'd start off with something slightly more subtle and go for uh, a statement sleeve that was gathered into a tight cuff. And the fabric I chose for that was a dark green, um, sort of a forest colored green. Because in my last video, lots of people complimented um, my colouring going with green really nicely and I do like green so I, I ordered some from Minerva and when it came I was really pleased with the quality of it. It's actually a fleece back jersey and this is what I made. So basic sweatshirt shape, it's got this uh, popper placket on the shoulder which I used silver poppers for, not poppers, snaps. Um, they're not silver either, they're gold. You can tell I'm not concentrating today, the kids are all home, so I'm thinking I'm gonna get interrupted any minute. So yeah, oh, that didn't want to open. You can see you've got your um, snap placket there on the shoulder. And I have to say, that caused me quite a lot of confusion because the instructions um, for how to construct that by turning over the, um, cutting off the excess from the pattern piece was in a place in the instructions that I hadn't really looked. So I think it was actually written in the cutting instructions. Um, anybody who's made this will understand what I'm talking about. But obviously, since you're making a placket, one side of your sweater has to be longer than the other, or one side has to be shorter. But both sides were exactly the same. On the pattern piece so when you cut them out they're exactly the same so I was really foxed and I'm lucky that um, I'm part of the fold line Facebook group and popped on there and um, I think Jay came to my rescue and told me that actually the instructions were there to cut off the excess from the piece of fabric it's not making much sense but it was a bit of a head scratcher anyway here's the sleeve so you can see it's gathered into this cuff and I did not find that easy to be fair. This is quite a chunky fleece back sweatshirt and gathering all that fabric into the cuff was a bit of a challenge and I'm not terribly pleased with the evenness of the gathers. There are areas where it's not quite as even as I would have liked but still you know it came together well. Um, it's got a bottom band. I will insert some pictures of me wearing it so you can see. Um, I made no alterations to the pattern. I can't remember what size I made, but I will pop that down below so that you know. But um, yeah, I have to say I'm slightly underwhelmed. I put it on for the first time and thought, hmm, I don't know. Maybe I just need to wear it a few times and check it out. But yeah, not sure. The pattern itself is well drafted. Um, I didn't have to change it at all. Uh, it comes in sizes, let me have a look and see if I can tell, 36 to 46. Um, I don't know what that relates to because it's a French pattern. Oh, here we are. Uh, a 32 and a quarter inch bust to a 40 and one eighth inch bust. So it's not got a massive range. It's not terribly inclusive on the sizing. But yeah, I mean, it's okay. I haven't reached for it too many times in my wardrobe, which is usually a sign of a make that probably won't get worn all that often. But tell me what you think when you've seen me wearing it for you. So the next thing I made was another sweatshirt. And that's because back in March, it was actually really, really cold. And I had this fabric that my husband had bought me for Christmas, I think it was. And it's a nice zebra print jersey and it's unusual in the fact that it's actually a sort of petrol blue colour um, and a black so I wanted to make that up into something that I knew I was going to love that I knew I would wear lots of and that for me is the linden sweatshirt and loads of people have made the linden sweatshirt pattern 
I've made it so many times. It's quick, it's easy, I know it fits me nicely. Um, it's a raglan sleeve pattern, so the construction doesn't take long. And because there's no tracing for me involved, I've got all my pattern pieces all there ready to go. It's a nice, quick and easy, sort of satisfying make. It's got little cuffs on and a bottom band. And this for me looks fab with just a pair of jeans and a denim jacket or a um, faux leather jacket. And yeah, I just, it's just one of those sort of staple pieces that I know that I'm gonna get a lot of wear out of. So I was really pleased with that. Okay, so two more pieces to go. This one was for my daughter. I, um, it's Me Made May this month. And if you've been taking part on Instagram, you'll know that people tend to make a pledge for something that they're gonna do during the month of May to do with their handmade wardrobe. And I have decided that actually I would like to try some different patterns because I tend to make the same sort of tried and true patterns over and over again. My sewing time tends to be fairly limited and tracing patterns off just is such a dull part of the process for me and a lot of the time you can't really avoid it especially if you're buying independent patterns that come overlaid on one piece of paper um pdf patterns don't really like my fire i'm not massively keen on cutting and sticking and um even if you got the ao printed i would still want to trace that pattern out so that i could then use it again if the sizing was wrong or whatever. So yeah, this month I've pledged to myself, I will try uh, a few different patterns that I haven't used before. So the first thing I did was I signed up to the Flamingo Fabrics um, newsletter because they provide a free t-shirt pattern for children. And I just thought, oh, I'm just gonna, it's a free pattern. I'm just gonna have a go and see how it turns out. Ooh, it's noisy, someone driving by. Um, so this t-shirt I made using the Flamingo Fabrics free t-shirt pattern and my daughter is 13 but I think this is actually a size or an age 10 because she wanted to go for the sort of cropped, um, slightly more fitted look and having measured her that's the size that seemed to fit her the best. So um, it's a simple construction again. The only change I made to the pattern on this one is I just put some little cuffs on the end. So I did that by turning it under and then turning it out on itself and then just popping a couple of hand stitches on just to hold that cuff in place. Um, as you can see, the overlocking's on the inside. And she just um, really likes that little tiny difference, that feature. It's a, a beautiful fabric with gold sort of metallic spots on it. I don't know if you can see that very well on screen. And, and again, I've put my Kylie in the Machine label in there. Um, yeah, she's it's just a basic t-shirt. There's not an awful lot to say about it. I have to say, I'm a bit disappointed with this fabric. I got it from um, our local haberdashery and there's a fault running down, down the front of it. I don't know if you can see, uh, she's not noticed, but I noticed that when I was putting that together, that actually there's a fault on that t-shirt, so that's a bit of a shame, but never mind, another quick and easy make. So the final thing I made, and this was in April, was a Till in the Buttons birthday cardigan. I found this really gorgeous fabric. Um, I actually had some money for my birthday, I turned 43 in April, and I, wanted to spend some money on some really nice quality fabric that was more expensive than my usual fabric that I would purchase. Um, and having said that, this wasn't that bad. It's just that I'm a bit of a skin flint when it comes to fabric. I tend not to want to spend a massive amount unless I know exactly what I'm making is gonna turn out well. So this was a bit of a wild card because one, it was more expensive fabric, and two, I've never made the Bertha cardigan before, and so it was a bit of a risk, but a happy uh, project, I am glad to say, because I do really like it. So this fabric is a ribbed knit fabric. It's kind of like a melange sort of effect, blue and sort of a creamy colour, and it's uh, soft, but it's got quite a lot of structure to it and um, I made the Bertha. So um, if you guys don't know, I've got the book here. I'm sure most people have seen this pattern before, but if you're not familiar with it, the Bertha cardigan is from Tilly's book, Make It Simple. 
and um, it's a batwing style cardigan with no fastenings on the front. I made a size 4 which is my standard size for Tilly patterns. Um, I did notice though since she's made her pattern range more inclusive whereas before I used to be dead on a size 4 now I am sort of well a th three and a half which is kind of I suppose where she's um, uh, extended the range of sizes it's kind of affected the measurements ever so slightly but um, so yeah this cardigan it fits me okay but it's just a tiny bit too big which is not usual for me normally a size 4 is just spot on so but then it is an oversized cardigan so I don't know whether or not it's actually just meant to look like that um, I will insert pictures of me wearing it because you can't really see when I'm holding it up but it's got a massive bat wing I really enjoyed the construction of this. There's a huge um, neck band which is shaped that goes right the way round from the bottom to the um, other side. And then there's a join in the middle and that's kind of angled. So it's really nice shaping because it actually hugs the back of your neck. Um, I was really pleased with the way that my the bottoms turned out here. Uh, lined it all up nicely. I just need to perhaps, I mean, I'm just being a perfectionist. Um, nobody would notice it, but. I might just pop a little hand stitch in there just to stop that um, overlocking from peeping out underneath. And what else to say about it really? I chose this really lovely pale blue colour because that seems to be quite a lot in the high street at the moment, these sort of pastel colours. And I did actually find a really beautiful sort of viscose linen at the same time, which is um, a perfect match for this with... Um, leaves and things over it which I'll show you in another video. The only thing I think was a bit of a shame about this pattern is the cuffs aren't shaped so whereas the neckband fits beautifully the cuffs are just sort of a straight cuff and when you've got the sleeve coming down like this and I'm wearing it, it actually doesn't hug my wrist um, terribly well so it's quite gappy here where my hand comes out and I just think I've made patterns before where the cuff piece is actually um, shaped so that it's more, I don't know how to explain this, but so that it, it sort of follows the line of the sleeve more, does that make sense? Rather than just being sort of a straight, straight cuff on the end. But yeah, I'm just being pedantic. It's actually a really great pattern. And if I wanted to shape the cuff piece, I could just change the pattern piece ever so slightly. That would not be too difficult to do, but yeah really pleased with that one so so far so good um I think I'm going to get more time for sewing um I tend to find that I like to chop and change with the things that I like to craft and do so um sometimes I do a bit of female sometimes I do a bit of sewing sometimes I'm muck, mucking about with the cricket machine and doing paper crafts or making jewelry or something so um I hope you're uh, interested in seeing that other content because um, sewing isn't just the only thing that I get up to in my spare time. Thanks ever so much for watching. Sorry for the huge gap. I will endeavour to get my next video up a bit quicker than uh, two months time. I've got uh, an exciting project, a bit of a secret shopper coming up for um, some inexpensive fabric. So if that's something you're interested in, you might want to subscribe and press that bell so that you know when it gets uploaded to YouTube. Thanks very much for watching then. Bye.